Hey guys, in this Brit Lane vlog there's going to be a massive part of voiceover of some of the footage. Uh, I talk about pick and dip versus traditional laying, sort of small trowels versus big trowels, tubs versus boards, talk about full fill cavity versus open cavity, I talk about my thoughts on footings, my thoughts on superstructure, my thoughts on the general modern house building of today. Ramble on, as I always do, but enjoy. And I'll see you, as always, in the next clip. Hey guys, welcome to another Brit Lane vlog. Just got out of a cold plunge. Uh, it's seven, five to seven. I'm just about to pick Paul up. Um, it's just me and me and Odd Carrier today. So just one on one. Uh, Dean's not in. Because obviously Dean's uh, just laying now. So I have to do things slightly differently when there's two of us on the line. Because he'll probably lay about... 8 to 10 bricks to my 30, something like that maybe, so we can afford to run out things longer, so I don't really normally go for longer than like a 30 odd brick run uh, when I'm on my own, so we can we can extend that to like 50 or even 45, but these bricks are dead dry on this job, uh, we're on a new site, uh, full fill insulation, uh, we've been on it so far, we did two and a half days last week um, I did a day solo yesterday uh, I'll show you what I did yesterday uh, on my own and uh, when we get there and uh, yeah we'll pretty much have got it up in you know probably five or six days uh, if everyone was in every day we'd have probably you know not to show the day off of that but, um, but yeah that's what it is right see you on the job so here we are. That's what I got done yesterday. Uh, start of night, it's about nine o'clock. So yeah, I'm gonna crack on, see you in a bit. So since uh, I didn't start well nine this morning laying, look at all the fuck's that. Uh, yeah, we've worked through today, it's about 11 now. Check it out. We've got this uh, profile set up this side now. Nice little uh, double sided sticky tape. Wrap round, I'll do a two tile and through that at some point. Uh, that gable's all the way up, 22. I don't normally take it that high, but did about 200 brick this morning, so I'm gonna come down here and and uh, yeah, build some big corners. I'll get some head cam in a bit. Um, yeah, let's crack on. So it's uh, two bells, and we uh, I worked through today, and uh, we're gonna just put this other corner up, but. Uh, Check it out on Edcam. Hey guys, Harry here, and we're back with another Britlane vlog finally. Um, so, voiceover part of the video, uh, it was a little bit loud today on site, and um, I had my music on. I had music on the radio, just me and Paul, so I like to keep the music on. I like to try and keep my days as you know short as I can, really. Um, these days, you know, it's still, you know, still make a decent wage. Uh, so I try to put the numbers in, and the, the, I have you know my odd cup, and my odd solo day, uh, you know, on one on probably maybe once every two weeks. So I had a solo day yesterday. I laid about a thousand brick, but I started laying bricks at eight o'clock, and I didn't finish laying bricks until probably half five. So you know I did you know a lot of hours. So you know that was probably ten hours on the trowel there. Solid. I didn't have a snap. And then today I started laying at about 9 o'clock, and I finished at 3, so, you know, um, 6 hours laying on the trowel, you know. Um, you know, it's one of them, you know, I, I sometimes I go for it, sometimes I don't, but I only laid probably 300 more bricks yesterday, and uh, today I laid still about a 700 brick uh, pretty easily, you know, and a lot easier, because obviously I've got hog carrier in with me and um, when I'm solo you know I haven't got to set anything up for Dean I ain't got to show Dean anything or you know give him any pointers or whatnot it all just you know takes away from me Lena sometimes you know and uh, obviously when when I'm on my own I just build these sort of corners and run them in so that's what I did yesterday when I was solo and then uh, this is basically what I've done today same sort of thing um, you know, it was noticeably hotter today, so obviously that can slow you down. Like I said, in 
uh, I mentioned it at the end of the video, but you've got to respect the heat, you know. Uh, it's something I didn't do last year. I'm still around 10 kilos away from probably optimal sort of bricklaying weight or, you know, fitness, optimal fitness. I'm still 10 kilo away, so, you know, even though I'm 97 kilo now, I was as high as, uh, you know, 117 or 120 odd uh, this time last year. So, you know... Even though I've even though I've lost, you know, over twenty kilo, you know, it's still I'm still ten kilo away from probably being, you know, as quick as I could be, you know. I, but I still try and take that extra bit of time, you know, make sure everything's tidy, you know, make sure I double check everything. We're six foot level now. Um, just can't take any chances, you know. You know, double check the damps. I put a four inch damp under this under this big radon barrier or continuous damp just because you know just because if you know if there's anywhere that the barrier or the uh you know continuous damp doesn't cover obviously there's another four inch under it i just go a little bit overkill on some stuff um you know i still point the back of my block even though it's you know all insulated full fill and uh i try to put my insulation in you know I lay at least three or four coats of brick, and then I put the insulation in, clean off, uh, just to limit the mist not dropping down the back uh, onto the insulation. You know, so try to keep everything nice and full and that and whatnot. Obviously, there is, you know, pick and dip isn't great for dead dead low down like this. You know, especially with on the wee pole course. You know, you sometimes end up with a few empty joints. But the whole idea of pick and dip is. Because you are, you know, filling your joint, you know, eighty percent full, uh, and you're not putting any grooves in your in your spread. The the spread that you put over the top and press into the brick fills all those holes, all those voids, uh, to make a solid, um, a so, you know, a solid bond and a solid full bed on and perp joint combination. You know, a lot of people say, you know. Uh, you know, pick and dip, you know, it, it gives you empty joints, this, this and that, but that isn't the case because you're not putting furrows in your mortar and you're, and you're squeezing all that mortar out to the front of your brick. And to be quite honest, you know, although although people don't want to admit it, but if you're putting furrows in your mortar, you're allowing the mortar to squeeze out both sides and basically into the cavity. And you've got a sort of limit now, especially on new build houses, especially on these social houses as well, like these are, these are, uh, these are housing association. You've got to limit the amount of gobble that goes into the cavity, you know, to stop, stop, you know, moisture bridging and, um, you know, especially an open cavity, but obviously this is full fill. Uh, and, you know, that, that is what the NHBC want to see. You want to see those clean cavities, you know, at the end of the day. Um, you know, we're not in the 80s anymore, you know, internal walls, you know, houses aren't all built out of solid brick. You know, we don't build nine inch walls. And then fucking dot and dab and plaster them, you know, this cavity, you know, this is the way of modern building, so you've got to adapt, you know. You know, it's people, and the same thing with the boards and the tubs, you know. You know, I get people constantly asking me about them, well, why do you work out of tubs? Why do you use such a small trowel? Because you can lay more bricks with a small trowel, you know, if your arm isn't as tired, you can move your arm quicker, <coughs> especially in summer as well. If you are putting one spread down to one brick, that mortar is nice and fresh and workable, and it squeezes out of the, squeezes out of your perps easier, squeezes out of your bed, fills all the voids easier in all of the joints, and makes it generally a stronger wall. You know, you, people argue till, you know, with me until the cows come home, but because they don't want to try it or they don't want to learn anything new, um, you know, I was laying bricks for the best part of ten years before I learned how to do pick and dip. I've been doing pick and dip for. You know, since 2020, so we're in 2023 now, and you know, I wish I'd have learnt it sooner. So, you know, it isn't ideal for for these low down sort of uh, jobs. You know, I should have been really putting, you know, with uh, a perp joint on, but it was the end of the day when I was recording. I was completely baked by the sun, and uh, you know, I put plenty of sun cream on, but it is some of it is you don't want to be doing more than five or six hours in the heat, you know. That's why you've got to, uh, you know, have it all set up so, you know, your gang's always viable, you know. I always say that's why it works with Dean. Dean covers his money, you know. Paul's a fantastic old carrier and he keeps us going easily. And, uh, 
you know, loads out well in front and, uh, you know, keeps the motor nice and uh, nice and workable, gets every, keeps everything tidy and, uh, you know, it keeps all his bricks at waist tight. As you can see, I'm going to give him the head cam at some point and he's going to show, uh, you know, put a little bit of hog, car hog carrying on the uh, channel, how he do how he goes about, uh, you know, with, his, with the hod. Uh, he does the hod on his shoulder and then he carries a... a brick clamp in the other hand so you know you'll see some stacks stacked with the brick clamps and some without um you know if you're if anyone's wondering which is the best you know it's whichever you can get on with you know i've stopped using brick clamps now um since my back went and the packs of bricks that you get these days because they shifted about that much on jobs now because everything's built to order so you know jobs are you know sort of running at a smaller you know on a, on a smaller scale now just because of the slowdown and the interest rates of houses and whatnot. You'll find jobs, you know, you'll find packs of bricks being shifted all over the place, you know. Um, and the band, and they've stopped a lot of the time now, If you've, I don't know if anyone's noticed in packs of bricks, but they've stopped uh, putting paper between the layers of bricks. So that's, the, you'll notice that. There's never any paper about on the, in, on, I've, no, I've noticed. And it's just companies are cutting down on costs, you know, you know, years ago they didn't wrap bricks. I remember when uh, we were using Connie bricks at, at Keep Mill years and years ago. Um, and they were using Connie bricks, but because they were cutting down, it was just coming out of the recession. Uh, I think we we're on like 300 a thou or 320 or something like that. And they cut down on uh, cut down wrapping the bricks up. You know, bricks didn't come with, with plastic around them. And obviously they realised about a few bad rainy winters and, you know, it was essential that bricks became covered, you know you know and uh god had me fair fair load of uh ibstock bricks uncovered ibstock bricks that used to turn up and 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 the marshall connie bricks that were just fucking saturated to fuck and you know you'll notice the building trade changes you know depending on profits and whatnot and the gear changes you know so at the moment i've gone back to using uh just carrying 10 or 12 at a time flat as paul stacks them with the hard but you know uh if anyone wants to know what is the best, I'd probably say for keeping your bricks clean, stack on flat. Um, for probably speed, if you're loading out on your own, probably brick clamps. But I'm not all about loading out at speed anymore. You know, I'm, we've got. I've, uh, you know, luckily I ran into Paul on another job probably four months ago now, and he's been working with us uh, for about a month or so now, I think. Um, but I've been, we've already been on two two different jobs, and uh, you know we just we just brought in where we needed. You know we fit in as a smaller gang because we're sometimes one on one, we're sometimes two on one, and uh, you know you got to learn to be flexible in this game. I've been I was I you know as the years have gone by, as I've always been a one on one, you have to learn to sometimes have some of the crapper houses. Sometimes you don't get all the cream all the time, but. As the quicker you get and the faster you get through work, the more work you get given, and the more chance that work's going to be decent. So if anyone's wondering, you know, if you know if you're a less experienced brick layer or a brick layer who's trying to pick his speed up or gain tips from these sort of videos, you know, just just realise that you know if you're not earning as much money as you want now, you know, if you keep and persevere and change your ways, because you know the point of all these videos are showing people different ways of doing things that aren't being done because if you were doing them you know you know if you want something you never had before if you want to lay a thousand bricks in a day that you've never done before you've got to change the way you do something you've got to do something you've never done before so that's what these whole vi all these videos are about the changing the way of doing things you know for the better you know obviously you'll watch all my videos you know uh, the videos speak for themselves you know because there's you know, at the end of the day, like, you're working out of tubs, I don't, <laughs> laying in summer isn't a pain in the arse anymore, especially with the tubs, you know, keep your motor nice and wet as you would have it on a board, just put it in a tub, obviously using a bucket trowel, like, just in the name, I'm working out a bucket, so I'm using a bucket trowel, I just adapted it to how I like to lay, so, put a bit of a peak on it, rounded edge, nice, nice for cleaning the tubs, and, you know, away you go, it's not rocket science really, but, um, you know, companies or, you know, tradition or whatever you want to call it, you know, the trade of brick lane, you know, people aren't really changing the ways. They're still using 11, 12 inch trowels, they're still working off of a bit of fucking chipboard that dries your gobble out in two seconds. And there is, you know, adaptations of these 
plastic boards and that but they're expensive and I've had a lot of gear nicked off of jobs over the years so I only leave the gear that I'm, will I'm willing to lose because you know some of these stands and plastic boards they're setting you back for just a board and stand combination you're looking at you know 50 or 60 quid just for one mortar you know um, you know basically just one more location on that you'll need potentially five six seven boards and stands whereas these tubs are about 5.99 uh, i use you know a little bit of a uh, inside tip i use the red gorilla stuff you know i've, uh, I've seen a few uh, guys get sponsored by red gorilla but i've been using these tubs these are the strongest tubs you can get for uh working out of and shifting about so Red Gorilla, black tubs, you can find them on deal in some places, or you can pay up to like 11, 12 quid for them, or you, uh, you know, you can get them on deal at, you know, sometimes 6 quid. So yeah, I use the 40 litre or 38 litre Red Gorilla tubs, and uh, that's what I work out of, and I use, you know, yeah, bog standard uh, heavy duty bins, you find them on most sites. If you ask the site labourer nicely, on only gear one or two, uh, but I've just bought mine off eBay, and uh, you know, they last about probably 6 months or so, you just need to keep them clean and don't chuck bricks onto them or else they'll smash so uh, but yeah um, when it comes to full fill insulation there's I forgot what I was talking about but uh, I use a little insulation knife I love this a full fill insulation it's so much so much easier to build with um, you know there's no leaving bricks out everywhere you know what you know, it arguably makes a fucking more complete house because obviously you're blowing insulation in. There is going to be voids. I've seen it. I've opened cavities up when it's been blown in, and this it all settles, and there's massive voids in it. It just isn't as good as full fill. Um, but you know, a lot of companies go for that open cavity. Uh, whether it's uh, probably because it's cheaper, but uh, you know, it depends. You know, there's arguments of you know moisture bridging and whatnot. I think I don't know the exact fucking science behind it whether you know rock wall or open cavity is better but um definitely to build with i'd recommend if you get on sites like sort of strata or keep melt that do this uh, do this full film uh insulation it's definitely worth a good 50 or 60 quid a thou um time wise you know i've worked open cavity i've laid thousand bricks open thousand or twelve hundred bricks a day open cavity and i've laid a thousand or well, twelve hundred bricks in a day you know, full fill cavity, and to be quite honest, for stress management and just fucking saving your wrists and arms and squinting, looking down and all, it's just a lot easier to build with, uh, you know, with full fill, you know, you just have to, you know, drag a bit of gobble off the top of the insulation every few course, and if you put your insulation in probably like three course, you know, showing your insulation three course above your brick, you know, it, it reduces all your mortar squeezing out into the actual cavity and just uh, you have to lay the brick a slightly different way as well you need to sort of minimize the gobble scraping out the back that's why you see me angle the spread uh, when I'm picking dipping away from the cavity you angle it and uh, just stops that squeeze out you know stops that squeeze out into the back that you don't want you don't want that you don't want it squeezing out into the back you don't want that excess mortar filling the cavity you know so um, but yeah you know there's uh, Hopefully more people pick up this, uh, you know, the tubs thing. You know, people not, you know, I, I, enough videos of me using them that, you know, but I think there's a lot of people, you know, they like the big trowels and whatnot, like to spread a load of gear on the wall, but you don't need, is, you know, there's no need really. There's no need, you just end up breaking your wrist and from someone who's fucking put in thousands of hours on the trowel and hundreds of thousands of hours, fuck now. I do 10 hour days, you know, I, you know, the way to go about this price game, especially when now the prices are on the decline with interest rates and whatnot, you've got to find a good mix between speed and stamina, you know, you can't be fat, you know, there's a lot of guys who are fast, they can work fast for an hour or two, but they're, they're knackered, they want to go home at two, uh, they're working efficiently to where, you know, they knacker themselves out, you want to find a, a nice balance of where you can work eight hours, in an efficient and fast way and not tire yourself out that's why this little trowel is you know that's why there ain't that many people who are fucking fast neat and can work you know and have good fucking stamina to work a good amount of hours and there ain't that many bricklayers what earn what i do but 
if you know it is it's just something to help out you know especially you know the youth of to you know tomorrow or even bricklayer that you know uh you know you can make you some really good money and change your life because of it you know you don't have to settle for earning just 30 odd grand a year or 40 odd grand a year you can you can really step your game up you know and uh i've not i've like things that you know be able to afford things that you know otherwise you couldn't work in it like fucking tesco's or you know working on day work at fucking 170 a day or whatever you get after your agency fee and get, shit gets took off you know it really does make a difference, especially and we have the luxury in, as bricklayers, you know, that other tr you know other bricklayers in other parts of the world don't have, you know, price readily available price work to subcontract from, you know, big contractors or whoever you're, uh, you know, or, or the big subbies, and you have that readily available to you, you know, at the drop of an hat. All you need is to get your UTR number away you go. It's so accessible compared to other parts of the country where you're just stuck working for construction companies on day work and you don't have any other you know outlet you know if you can lay twice the amount of bricks or do twice the amount of work or do neater work than the person next to you you don't get rewarded for it whereas price work is uh, and being able to you know lay neat and fast and get through work on price um you, you were very very fortunate i think we are anyway in this country at the moment you know, there is the other end of the stick where you struggle to make money, but if you get over that fact of worrying if you're going to get enough done and just focus on what you're doing, you know, that soon becomes a thing of the past, worrying about earning money. Um, you can get frustrated, but if you get to a point where you save a lot of your money each month, you know, if for some reason something slows you down, you can just take it in your stride, roll with the punches and just say, right, there's always next week to... You know, if we've been squaring up lifts, if we're on second lifts and fourth lifts for two weeks and we're not been earning as much money, there's always when them second and fourth lifts are done, there'll be always a first lift, always a top out, always a band lift, just waiting around the corner, you know. Um, you know, that, to have that mentality as well, you know, and to not get stressed as well. I'm one of the, you know, the kind of people now that I work in a very stress-free environment. I try to, you know, people I work with are stress-free Paul's very chill, just like myself. Dean's very chill. And, um, you know, we work in a way, we work, we get to site at a time or set off at work at a time that suits us. And we work in a chill manner. There's no rushing. You know, we get done what we get done in a day. It don't matter. Um, there isn't any, you know, any, oh, fucking hell, you know, we need to get this done. We need to get that done. That responsibility relies on me. And me only and that's the best way to work and when you get over the um you know the panic the rush factor the you know the oh what ifs what that you know if you silence all that shit in your mind and just focus get into a fucking state where you're focusing on what you're doing you know uh being certain of what you're doing as well there's one thing that i used to do as a as a more you know intermediate or journeyman uh, you know, as a brick, I'd be thinking about where's windows going, where's this going, where's damps going, where's ties going, you know, and if you sort of rehearse that shit before and like, take an hour on a night, look at the drawing, take a, you know, stand back, uh, you know, assess what you did in a day, have a plan, you know, uh, build in a way that suits you mentally, that's why I've started going back to, uh, you know, block work first, it's so much, you know, easier mentally for me to attack a couple of days on the block and then a few days on the brick you know um it's so much easier mentally to do one side at once um you know you know in always uh you know the fastest you know block work first it can it can cause some problems when it's windy and whatnot but you know knocking out you know trying to work in one area at once so you're not i find with brick work first you sort of you know you penalize yourself because you're walling yourself in and a lot of people don't load a lot, load out all the blocks first before they build the brickwork. So whereas if you get all your blocks in first, do all your block work first, you're knocking out a massive amount, of, massive shell of your house first. Uh, you can get loaded up, set up easier, and then the brick can be sort of like an afterthought. You can load that after, you know, you get all your frames in, most of, most of your door and, and uh, patio door frames in. I don't put the window frames in on block, but I put the door, the patio doors, and the uh, front doors in on uh, on block, and that just takes away a lot of the guesswork, a lot of the messing about when you come to your brick. You know, you can just profiles on a way. Um, 
here insulating so we're coming over here now to insulating uh, this stuff's bang on you know it all comes cut for you um, I use a little insulation knife it's like a tenner off Amazon or something like that you can use a bread knife basically if you want to get a cheap uh, cheap B&M bread knife does the same job but I think they last about I've had this one four months and it's getting a bit blunt now but I could do with just buying a few cheap bread knives and basically that's all it is um, the other side cuts through rigid board insulation uh, as like a as a soft side as like a you know bread side and like a rigid board side both good you know I use that you know the rigid board side of the knife to cut through that this new thick damp we use uh, thick damp has made it a little bit harder but it's uh, and it's not even that much stronger either because I've tapped ta you know I've uh, been tapping tapping uh, you know the damp wheel that and stuff and it's now stronger than the other stuff I can I can assure you that it still goes through just the same if you smack it hard enough, especially on the open cavity stuff. Um, you know, it is thicker. Whether you know regulations change, I know there's a regulations coming in now with 150 mil cavities after a certain date. So, you know, the building industry, you know, comes up with different things it needs to do, and I suppose it's all driven by the NHBC. But you know, I still think it's uh, open cavity is a massive. It's a massive flaw in the building, you know, having fucking Swiss cheese houses, with, you know, weakening your house by leaving bricks out everywhere. You know, I just don't think it's the way to go. I think full fill is a lot stronger. You know, you're not leaving bricks out anywhere. Um, but you don't always have the, you don't always have the fucking, uh, you know, luxury of building, building with full fill. You know, there's only so many, uh, you know, that's we've jumped between two different housing firms so far. Uh house builders obviously the same subby but you know you don't always you know you have to go where the work is and where the slabs are being poured so and i don't have any interest in going back on footings anytime ever to be quite honest you know people say it's easy to get your money in on footings and i say i value being able to work for the next 40 years because you know my back went deadlifting arguably but it, you know ultimately accumulated fatigue because of work as well and I was on that timber frame job, laid down on that scaffold, and it wasn't nice. It wasn't nice working for four months in pain. Uh, sorry, four week in pain. It, you know, it managed to subside, but I've only just felt right this week. You know, my back's only just felt pretty much back to normal. It took me a lot, a long time, six weeks probably, since I put that that video up saying I hurt my back. Nasty, it's nasty stuff. And you know, the footings will do that to you if you stay in them long enough. And they're not. You can't always rely on groundworks firms to scrape them right and you know, have everything set right for you, you know, and I, they never have the fucking service halls clearly marked out, it's just a massive floor, it's not like a drawing way, every housing firm you go to now, the drawings are pretty bang on, they've, they've pretty much got the, you know, drawings down pat now, everyone sort of uses the same sort of template, you can't fuck stuff up, whereas footings are still fucking very basic, it's very going back in time when you're trying to assess a fucking drawing you get given and fucking it's half the time it's been printed like a fucking roll of newspaper and you can't even read it half the time because no ink in print and whatnot when you get given it you know whereas on housing now you know we get our drawing supplied through as phone on a pdf so it's a lot easier but you'll not find that a lot of time in these groundworks firms because you find a lot of groundworks firms now sort of small scale you know they have their own brickies and whatnot you don't see a lot of big subbies doing mostly foundations they're the, the sort of the the small groundworks firm themselves get their own men in, and uh, I just find it, you know, the continuity. You're getting through footings in a couple of days, you know, two, three days. You've done one footing, you need fucking shit tons, and I don't fancy wading through shit. I just don't bending double all day. You lay slower, like down low as well. That's another massive thing. People think you know you can lay, oh, you smash it in straight walls, but you're laying a, a lot slower, and especially for someone like myself. You know, as soon as I get above fucking six course, I'm laying at double the speed I was at the first course, you know, so it don't make sense for me to be bending down, especially, you know. Some people are different, you know, some people like it, but anyway, right, voice over over. <laughs> it's the end, right. See you in the next clip. So it's uh, half three. And this is what we got done. I didn't really want to record today. I wasn't feeling it really, but uh, that's what got done. Just me and Paul. Um, I did all the jointing and 
Paul got all the gear, so check it out. So I got about 200 brick over on that other gable, over yonder. Uh, about 260 there, that's 460, and I tailed that one dead far out, so it's about 200 there. About 660, something like that, for uh, starting at 9 o'clock, like walling sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get off, and I'll uh, see you in the voiceovers. So yeah, that was today. Uh, nice steady here to be fair. I need to try and do more of them, you know. You aren't always got to, you know, as a bricklayer, you aren't always got to fucking push for laying a thousand brick a day, you know, 700 is plenty. Um, and, and the heat, you know, the one thing I neglected last year is the heat, you know, I mixed, uh, you know, I had the top of my tan up today. You know, you got to respect that heat because it's going to fuck you up for days, you know. You know, you might as well have five days laying 700 bricks a day rather than three days laying, uh, or two days laying a thousand and then having to have a day off because you're poorly. But this is what I'm eating now, I'm having some cold cuts. Cold cuts, bit of French bread, bit of butter. And that's, uh, I drink me some coffee cake later. Oh, i got to get the salt back in. Beautiful. Right. I can't get that fucking stain off my face. Hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.